policy of turning back votes, but put forward by Priti Patel, the Home Secretary. That being the case, then how will numbers be stemmed and or will the military simply encourage more to set off in the first instance? Joining us, the founder and lawyer at First Migration, that is, uh, Dean Morgan. Dean Morgan, appreciate your time. Thanks ever so much for joining us. Uh, just on that final point there, that actually by placing more naval assets in the channel, there may be a possibility mm -hmm. we actually encourage more people to make the journey because they'll be safe in the knowledge, there'll be more hands to bear them to English shores. I mean, that potentially could be the case. But I, to be honest, I don't think it would be, though, because at the moment, the reason that people are making that journey is because they think they will succeed or actually arriving on British shores. Um, the government needs to be taking some kind of policy that's going to try and stem the tide of this. And the only way you're going to do that is to try and deter people from doing it. But you're right. If the Royal Navy is going to be a taxi service to help people across the channel, to bring them here, to be processed here, then potentially that could be... Uh, an encouragement for them. But I understand that the government's looking at trying to process applications for asylum or refugee status outside of the UK, in which case, then obviously it would be more of a deterrent, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, people get the logic of that, Dean, don't they? They get the logic that says, mm. OK, more, more Royal Navy ships, more ships in the channel to pick people up. The, the point where it breaks down is that we then return to Dover or other ports and those people enter a very dysfunctional asylum seeking process. I think there's a lot of support for the idea of saying, OK, third party processing. I mean, this is not just the stuff of headbanger regimes. It's something that's been pursued by the Danish government, centre left government in Denmark. They've signed a memorandum of understanding with a central African country. So this is this is something that people approve of. But every time it's floated by the Home Office, people shake their heads and say, ah, oh, no, it's just one of those silly Home Office ideas. It'll never, never come off. You know, last year there was 28,000 people, um, you know, tried to make it across and got across the channel. You know, hundreds of people die. It's a big business. You know, it's, it's a black economy and people make a lot of money out of it. Um, but this problem is only going to get worse. I mean, if you look at Afghanistan, they're facing massive problems now with an economic collapse. You know, we've got the winter, so there's not, you know, the migrants are not moving at this stage. But when it comes to the spring, there's, there's potentially going to be a mass migration through Europe. You know, people travel through a lot of countries to get to the UK, and you have to ask yourself why. Th this problem's not going to get better, and what we've been doing is clearly not working. So I think it was a 30% increase on the year before for the amount of people trying to get across. And 30,000 people, you know, you think of a small town in the UK that has a population of 30,000. That gives you some idea how many people a year are coming across. So we need to come up with better solutions, and one of them has to be to try to deter people from making that journey.